have our fiesta night here at the Super Bros Kitchen. We have made beautiful tacos with a homemade pinko de gallo. You're not gonna wanna miss it. We're gonna chef it up right now. Okay, so we're gonna slice up our tomatoes for the pico de gallo. We need four medium-sized tomatoes. And we just want the fleshy bits. We don't want the inside, so you wanna take the core out. We'll just slice them into french fries. Renoir. Renoir. So now that we have these french fries, we want them in eighth of an inch cubes. So we're gonna line them up. And then we're just gonna go right in like this. Let the knife do the work. Nice and nice and even cuts. Best you can do. Careful with your fingers. Right? It's important that we get every chop, see? The same size. We want the same size here. If you want a pretty pinko de gallo, then you take your time and chop your uh, chop your tomatoes and all your ingredients really well because there's no cooking, so you can take your time here. All your cooking time can go into here, taking time with your with your vegetables and your spices and your peppers. The uh, lime juices are going to cook the pinko de gallo. It takes 30 minutes in your refrigerator after we're done making. And uh, that's the greatest thing about the pinko de gallo is uh, the lime, the juices, uh, the citrus, the acid cooks our, uh, cooks our vegetables just right and our peppers just right. Remember when you're cutting into something to, to slice, right? These are slicers, the chef knife. You don't want to be rough with your ingredients. You want to be gentle. You always want to treat everything like you treat yourself. All your ingredients. Give your ingredients love and they'll give you love back. Same if like you were making a ceviche. You know those things is just showcasing your cutting skills. So you want to take your time with those things. Okay, so yeah, you definitely want to treat your, your ingredients um, with all the respect and care, you know? Especially when you're making things like pinko de gallos or ceviches where you need all of your ingredients to be cut the same. You should always try to make your dish look pretty. And you want to remove some of the white bits because they're a little bit bitter. And we'll keep the seeds out. Okay, there's our tomato. Okay, so we have a clean bowl here. And if you don't have one of these uh, bench scrapers, you should get one. They're really handy. They're great for cutting dough. They're great for moving stuff around. Okay, so we're just going to chop up our onion here. We need half a cup, finely chopped. So what we're going to do here is you just put your knife in like this and you go all the way through, but you don't go all the way to the end. Right? And we want them as thin as we can make these little tiny slivers. So we're going to take our time here and make our way through. Like think of McDonald's onions here. That's what we want. Really, 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 really small.
this uh, jalapeno here, guys. So Chef Rocky here is just chopping them into matchsticks and then we're going to cross cut them. About an eighth of an inch thick uh, tube cut is what we're looking for. And uh, remember what I said with the vegetables, you always want to take your time when you're doing pico de gallos or ceviches, anything where you're showcasing your vegetables and your cutting skills. So Chef Rock is doing a very good job here, taking, taking care and taking time, making sure everything is is the same size and the same cut. So we got our cilantro here. We're just gonna give it a quick uh, rough dice. We want everything to be about the same size as everything else in our meal. Beautiful. It smells so good, I love cilantro. Yeah, it's so powerful. Yeah, one of my favorite herbs. We don't wanna break it up too much where you lose it. All right, so now we got a couple bell peppers here, three different colors for the contrast. We're just gonna get uh, the seeds out. I like to start by rolling them in my hands like this to loosen the seeds up. Well, I actually even opened it up so they don't press too hard with these little guys. But yeah, you're loosening up the seeds by doing this, just rolling it in your hands like this. All right, so now we'll open it up. table like this I like to try to do two at a time and we just lay them out flat like this press them down them into the uh, same size as everything else pretty much into the cubes as, as uh, good as we can So we chopped our uh, peppers into cubes now. Um, and now we're gonna work on our avocado that we got here, like this. Grab your avocado, give it a little twist back and forth. Comes on out. Take your seed, your knife, chop into the seed. There it is, seed comes out. Then I'm gonna take my spoon, staying close to the skin to remove the uh, soft flesh from the from the skin, just like this. And it comes free, just like that, guys. And take any of the like, darker spots off your avocado if you got them. We're getting our stuff ready to combine together into our pico de gallo salsa. Um, we got our tomatoes diced up here, and we're gonna start adding in the other ingredients. So we have four medium tomatoes diced up. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add in our half cup of finely chopped red onions, followed by one jalapeno pepper that we have removed the membranes and seeds. Right here. Then we'll go in with the cilantro, quarter cup of fresh cilantro. Okay, so now we're gonna add in our red and yellow and orange bell peppers. We have a half a cup of them right here. And then we're going to go on to adding our corn kernels. We have a half a cup of these corn kernels right there. Perfect. We're going to toss those in. I'll give a little crunch guys. 
Oh, it'll be so lovely. Oh, I know sweet it. candy crunch. Yum. And then we're going to add in our two minced garlics. Two minced cloves right here, guys. Beautiful. Half, Can, uh, now we're going to add in a half a teaspoon of sea salt here. Right here, guys. Perfect. Then we're going to go in with our quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Right on top. We also have a quarter teaspoon of cumin, ground cumin here. Right here. Goes in. And then one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. Drizzle that on top. We'll go about one tablespoon here. This is gonna help our dressing here. Combine together, yeah. That's, that looks good there. Then we want to squeeze two tablespoons of lime juice, so the juice of one lime. And you want to roll it first to loosen up the juices inside. There we go. And we're going to just squeeze it out. Well, I'm going to squeeze it with my hands first. We're looking for two tablespoons of fresh lime juice. It's the juice of about one lime. And we like to use a fork here just to help get all the juice out and help break up all the fleshy bits to release. Then when you give it one final squeeze, it's gonna come out. Look at all that extra juice coming out. That's a good tablespoon right there for sure. Excellent. Yes. And this this lime juice here, everyone, is what's gonna cook our, our uh, pinko de gallo. We're gonna rest this now once we mix it all up. We will rest it for 30 minutes in our refrigerator you could go a bit longer if you want. Uh, the longer you go, the more flavors you're gonna get. So now we're gonna blend it first and then we'll finish by adding in our avocado. That way we don't crush and mangle our avocados up. It's nice and light. Mix yeah, we, yeah, we don't wanna over mix. Just, just blending in ingredients and mixing the lime juices around. See those colors coming together? like a party hey, it is a party look at that give them all a good close-up chef rock show them the party in the bowl <laughs> look at that Sorry. color it's beautiful it's like a celebration it's a rainbow of colors just like they tell you to eat up on our website you'll see it is very very important to eat a rainbow of colors each and every day www.superbrewscooking.com You will see we have a post about how eating a rainbow of colors benefits your heart health and overall body health. Okay, now we're going to take our uh, avocados and we're going to just dice them up. It looks delicious, the chef. Oh, yeah. Looks amazing. It's gonna go great with our tacos. It really well. I'm hungry. I've been fasting all day waiting for this. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> it's okay. It's good for you to fast, anyways. Right, so we got our salad uh, all put together, blended up in our bowl. Our next step is to set it inside the fridge for 30 minutes to an hour, and that'll let the ingredients combine together and uh, become more flavorful. Saran wrap onto your bowl, seal it up, stick it on into the fridge. Guys. Welcome back guys. So we're going to make our uh, marinade for our chicken uh, to go into our chicken tacos. First we're going to start by adding two tablespoons of olive oil into our Ziploc bag. It's an approximate amount, so we'll do that. Uh, the next step here is, is we're going to add in our lime juice. So I got a fresh lime. We're going to add in both the, the fresh juice of both these limes. Right. Uh, the next thing we're going to add in is our minced garlic here. It's about uh, two cloves. 
feel free to add a few more if you want, if you're uh, extra into garlic. Put, uh, two cloves here. Uh, followed by our smoked paprika here. And this is our cayenne pepper. One teaspoon of the smoked paprika and one teaspoon of the cayenne pepper. Thank you, Chef Rich. You're welcome. And here's the cumin here we're going to add in. It's uh, one teaspoon of cumin as well. One teaspoon. Thank you. So I got a half a teaspoon of black pepper and a half teaspoon of salt. We'll add a half teaspoon of cayenne pepper as well. Now we'll add our chicken into the bag. I have my chicken in this bag now. I've diced this up into strips basically. Um, we'll see when they're added to the pan after. Uh, they're approximately like this though. You can see there's nice chicken strips here. You want to set this in your fridge for one hour up to overnight. Uh, the longer you leave it in your fridge, the more flavor you'll get. We are 500 degrees here everyone, we are screaming hot. Okay, we got our chicken here, it's been marinating for 24 hours guys. It's been resting on the uh, outside for about 30 minutes to get to room temperature. I recommend that before cooking any of your meat. We're just going to add this all to the pan. Look at that single guys. Gonna put the cap on, guys. Chicken's almost all nice and white on all sides. So we got two same size cast iron pans here. We just use one as a lid, and it creates a beautiful convection inside, and it'll cook our chicken in minutes. Alright, guys, we lift the pot off here and see what we got. Hopefully, oh, oh yeah, nice. look at that. Beautiful, tender, juicy, beautiful pieces of chicken that are just about ready to go onto our tacos. We want to keep all the juices in here. We don't want to evaporate our chicken. We want our chicken to be moist and beautiful. That's why using the lid really keeps it nice. Chef Rock is just going to go cut one, make sure it's good. Okay, everyone, we're going to start with our instant corn mesa flour. Two cups, right out onto the table like this. Just make a well inside like that. We have one and a half cups of lukewarm water. And we're just gonna start going in to the middle. And we're just gonna go like this and pull in. And just knead like this. If you lose a little bit, it's okay. We just make a little well. And we're just gonna start kneading with our hands right here until we form a nice nice ball here just keep pulling in more ingredients and drizzling a little bit of water right there we go don't worry how it's sticking to your hands it'll all come off in the end just gonna keep working it with our hands, pulling it through. You could do this in a bowl too, but I just wanna show you that it can be done on the counter. You don't have to dirty anything. It's already starting to take. And I'll show you how clean it is. It stays nice and clean, even your counter. See how it cleans up? It'll pull right off my hands too. It's almost there now. Yep. And we're gonna make a bunch of corn tortillas here for our tacos. If it's a little too wet, you just add a, 
a tiny a pinch of flour at a time until you're good. If it's too dry, you just add a little drip of water until you're good. I mean, doughs are really nice to work with. I love working with dough. It's one of my favorite things to do. Salt, uh, salt is optional, guys. Yeah, I'm going to throw in a little bit of salt, just a pinch here, just for my height. It helps tenderize it. Just sprinkle it around. That's enough. Half teaspoon is all you ever want to put in here if you are going to use salt. But I like to lay on the side of a little bit less whenever you can. You can use sea salt, it's better for you. See, we were clean. Or we were dirty and now we're almost clean, look. And then you just take your dough. Then you scrape up all the leftovers and look how clean your surface. Look at it. It's like I wasn't even here. All right? <laughs> And then we're just going to keep kneading. It takes about three to four minutes of kneading here. It's not much. We're just incorporating the ingredients. Feel free to use a stand mixer if you have it. If you need to, yeah. But I like to get my hands dirty. It makes you closer with your food. It's a bit of a workout too. So I'm going to go with a little bit more flour. And all I'm going to do is just pinch it. And just sprinkle from a height and work it in because I don't need much. I'm just trying to get the right texture. It's a few times, you know, and you get used to how things feel. The textures of your dough. You don't want things too, too dry, too wet. You want it right in the middle. Okay, everyone. So we got our ball here. She's beautiful. All we're going to do is turn them into golf ball sized pieces, roughly two tablespoons. All right, so to do that, we're gonna go right in half. Lay the halves down. We're gonna go in half again. Side by side. And we'll go half again. Half again. And then there's our tortillas. Looks like we got eight. Sounds about right. Roll them out. Make a little cup like this and just give them a little roll. And then we'll get to pressing. Take a nog off of that one, put it on the small one. We just want to even them out a little bit. Wherever we can, we want to try to be exact. These look pretty good. Okay, so I have some vegetable oil and a paper towel. You just dip it. You just don't want too much, right? So just drain it off. And then we're just going to go across our saran wrap here. And this will help us from not sticking. Make sure you get all your edges really nice. Both sides. And you want to do this uh, probably every two balls. Maybe you can get three out, three tortillas. Just grease it up a little bit. Okay, then we're going to go in with one ball right in the center here. Put your plate down and press it. And then we'll carefully lift up oh, to reveal yeah. a perfect tortilla. Okay, we're gonna cook off our corn tortilla here. 
So we want to leave it in the pan here and make sure our one side gets to a golden brown. About 30 seconds aside, guys. Basically what, what's going to happen is you're going to see it start to puff up and once it puffs up then you want to flip. Okay everybody we have our fresh tortilla right off the grill. We're just going to lay onto a nice warm or nice towel here and cover so that way it keeps the heat inside and then our tortillas will be soft and pliable still. So we're gonna cook the rest of these up and we'll see you right back. Welcome back friends. Long way for me. He's starting with half of the crew is here now. <laughs> Hello super bros, you go ahead. All right, we have our finished uh, product here, chicken tacos. Everything's made from scratch. Uh, house made pico de gallo, um, cilantro, sour cream, lemon drizzle, and uh, homemade uh, tacos taco shells here. We had them assembled, we just put them together. That's what they look like. And we're gonna bite into them and let you know how they taste. Let's okay, here we go. Can... Cheers, bro. Cheers. Mmm. These are really good. Yep. Good balance of flavor. These are the best tacos I ever made. These are so good. I'm excited. I want to eat like 10 of these. Mmm. Beautiful. This is a really quick recipe to cook up. Marinate your chicken overnight and it will come together in about 30 minutes for you. Pinko de Gala cooks itself, 30 minutes in the fridge. Everything else is simple, quick cooks. Recipes up on the Super Bros Kitchen cooking website at www.superbroscooking.com. Get there, check out our recipes. They're great, trust me. Gotta cook them, gotta love them. Like, share, hit the notification bell, and don't forget to subscribe. See you next episode. Take care. Take care. Hell yeah, man.